you jumping right in? Coming soon. Okay, coming soon. We've got this uh, Raspberry Beret <laughs> uh, kind you put on your single board computer. This is something I designed for myself, actually, because I was so tired of wiring and unwiring um, displays and STEM QT connectors, and I had wanted to test uh, functionality with some buttons or a switch. Um, so I decided, oh, I'll, I'll put this in the shop. Other people might find it handy. It's a very slim hat, a very tiny little hat that goes on your 2x20 Raspberry Pi. You get uh, two tactile buttons on pins 5 and 6, one switch on pin 13, and an iSpy connector, which you can use to connect to our various OLEDs and TFTs and ink displays. It's got the SPI, DC, chip select, um, busy pin, IRQ pin, uh, touch screen, selector pin, whatever, all those. Um, so you can, you know, many of our um, displays now have it automatically. So you can uh, you definitely make your, uh, like any ink display here, you just plug it in um, and you can use a fairly long cable and you don't have wires sticking out all over the place. And also a STEM and QT port, very handy. This is coming soon, it's not yeah. yet. Thanks, up. Um, this one is kind of also-ish coming soon, but it's it's going to be in the store so quickly, I might as well just uh, cover it now. Um, it's the TSC 2046. It's an SPI, resistive touchscreen controller. We have in the shop a very similar sounding TSC 2007. That's the i 2 c version. This one is SPI. It's really common. This is like supporting the Linux kernel, the Arduino library we wrote. Um, uh, you can uh, use it with any four wire resistive touchscreen. It's three to five volt compatible, which is very nice. So you can use it uh, with just about any microcontroller or microcomputer. Um, we have a one millimeter um, bi-directional like top and bottom contact um, connector on there, but uh, also there's breakouts. Um, it is SPI. So, you know, there's more pins than I2C, but you get um, an IRQ. So it tells you when the touch screen's been touched. Um, busy pin, you let me know, it, you, you can tell when it's doing a touch. And there's also uh, two uh, VBAT and auxiliary or two ADC inputs. So, you know, it's actually can be handy if you're on like a single board computer or something where you want to measure a battery voltage and you don't want to like wire up an ADC just for that. Um, this has a um, input that is two times, it, there's a resistor divider already in it. So it can measure two times um, whatever your power is. So like 2.5 volts, I think is the AREF. It can give you up to five volts input. Um, it's a nice little resistive touch screen controller. We'll be using it in some future breakouts. And next up. Uh, next up, more swirly grids. Um, Scott loves these. Um, he designed some more for me. Uh, this is a two by 10. This is a five by five, and then we have the biggest 10 by 10 size. Um, mm -hmm. but we have various sizes. You know, it's basically uh, each block is 0.6 inches. So it's either six inch by six inch, three inch by three inch, or 1.2 by six inch. Maybe I'll hold them up. Yeah. Or maybe show them on the overhead, different sizes. Yeah, like, which do you want to do? Uh, what are you going to do overhead? Let's do overhead because I think the overhead. Oh, sure. Okay, so this is one second. A little out of focus. It's too out of focus y. Yeah, they're still in the plastic. Bags. Yeah, but I'm going to keep going. Okay, so this is the 10 by 10. And somebody asked, I think, like last week, why are these aluminum and not PCB? I think that, P that uh, you know, like FR4, uh, first off, these are a lot easier to machine. You could drill and cut them, and you shouldn't be doing that with FR4 because you're going to get fiberglass dust, whereas this is just aluminum. So it's there's a lot of tools that can handle cutting, drilling, filing, bending aluminum. Um, also, it's not too bad to have it be conductive. You know, you might want um, a gigantic ground plane, say. But... Uh, definitely easier to machine and and work with. So I think for roboticists, this will be handy. You could also bend these, um, which I could see, you know, if you have a, a break, um, you could use this to um, make uh, cuts and bends and to turn these into different shapes. Um, so this is the five by five grid. So this is um, three inches by three inches. Um, we also already have the five by 10, which is three by six inches. And then this one is six by six of course you can take this and you can cut this and you know you have a hacksaw cut it down but uh probably more convenient just to get the size that you need and then finally i kind of like this ruler ish size and what's nice is you know you've got the um mounting holes and mounting slots every 0.2 inches and the slots go um 
uh, 0.3 inches. And so, you know, as long as you, you don't mind not having all four points connected, you can pretty much connect anything that you want onto this grid. I mean, like, I think like it's got enough uh, motion in each direction. And then we've got some uh, demo images maybe you could show. So, you know, I expect people will probably use this with stuff like STEM IQT and feather boards. You just do opposite corners um, and then you can mount them easily uh, for a nice uh, semi-permanent. Yeah, use nylon standoffs. Now you've got a semi-permanent setup. Um, nice and durable, but configurable. Okay. Ooh, and then the start of the show tonight, besides you, Lady Adar community, our customers, our entire team who makes this thing go called Adafruit is... Dun, da, da, the Matrix Portal S3. So we have Matrix Portal, where we actually did just have Matrix Portal M4s back in stock. But here's the thing. I'm not going to get more SAMD51s till 2024. You don't want to wait that long. So what we did is we designed a board that's basically drop-in compatible functionality to the SAMD51-based Matrix Portal, but it's 5x less, features the ESP32 S3, uh, has great RG Matrix support, and it improved a couple of things as well. Um, there's now mounting holes, and now you can either plug it in the bottom or you can connect from the top. So if you look at the first video graphic, you see there's a cable that connects. So you you no longer have to have it attached to the back. Um, you know, we're we're poking at the port because somebody's going to ask me, how big can you drive? You can drive up to 128 by 128 pixel grid, which is, I think, hold on, get a calculator. Calculator. It's okay. So 128 times 128, uh, so 16.4 that kilopixels. But of course, it doesn't have to be 128 by 128 squared. It's just like the total number of pixels is that many. So if you're using like 16 by 32 panels, um, that would mean you can, uh, let's see, divide by 16 divided by 32, you can do 32 panels. If you're doing 64 by 64, you can do four panels. If you're doing 64 by 32, you can do eight panels, whatever, however the math works out. Um, that definitely works, but we're going to try to poke it and make it be able to drive even bigger displays. Of course, it's got Wi-Fi built in. In Arduino, there's even uh, Bluetooth low energy support. It still has the accelerometer, USB Type-C for power, um, you know, uh, STEM IQT port, buttons, NeoPixel for indication. Um, it's a really easy solderless way to get started with RGB matrix displays. And thanks to maker Melissa, um, the CircuitPython, uh, matrix portal library it automatically detects which version you have this one or the previous and she tested every example that we have and they all work um all of our demos so you can uh, pick this up if you don't want to wait till um next year to get a uh, matrix portal m4 and i think this is also going to have much better um wi-fi speed support so as we do more cool wireless projects um the s3 you know is gonna you know because there isn't a secondary chip it's all in one it's gonna do a great job that's the new, 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 new